sing a song. I'm reading her song this
Good morning. It is great to see you all here. What a beautiful morning to be gathered uh, to worship, to pray together, to receive Holy Communion. We are gathered this morning on the unceded and traditional territory of the Selic Okanagan people. We continue to pray for peace and for uh, together a reconciled hope over time in the light of God's Spirit. We gather today on Pentecost uh, Sunday after the Sunday after Pentecost the 19th as we continue to give thanks for God's work amongst us uh, in work in growth in inspiration and deepening us in faith as we are gathered today we give thanks for those amongst us who are in particular celebrating uh, significant moments in their lives and today the flowers for the altar are given uh, to the glory of God and in celebration of the 21st wedding anniversary of Jennifer and Tom McDonald. So congratulations uh, J to Jennifer and Tom. As well, we are also acknowledging today our lay minister is George Fish, and we acknowledge George and Jeanette Fish uh, celebrating the 60th anniversary uh, this last week. Congratulations. <laughs> Wonderful. We are Heading into a new week, there are a number of announcements to note as we do. In particular, the Tuesday Coffee Hour will be held on Zoom. Surprised by the Spirit is the theme. I look forward to gathering uh, with the group. The National Church is inviting us. Uh, pr our primate, Linda Nichols, invites us to reflect on some of the things that we have learned through the pandemic and some of the things uh, that, that we might want to carry with us, uh, some of the things we might think, okay, we don't need that anymore. What is the Spirit inspiring in us as we uh, come along and continue to look forward to the end of the pandemic, whenever that might be? And so in the midst of it, we continue to look for God's work amongst us and the inspiration of God's Spirit. The Christian Meditation Group is beginning uh, once again. Sylvia Ruffley is coordinating that. If you're interested, that is also on Tuesday morning. Give Sylvia a call uh, to learn more about it and to ask uh, what is all involved. A couple of notes regarding the uh, Cathedral Cupboard, an invitation to give as we come to Harvest Thanksgiving Sunday and the National Thanksgiving Day next weekend. Uh, to toward the work at the Cathedral Cupboard through the Share the Abundance invitation. You will see a note about that in the announcements. As well, even today after the service, you will find apples available outside uh, if you are able to make a donation uh, toward the Cathedral Cupboard and other outreach initiatives and take some apples away with you. That would be wonderful. And an invitation from St. Andrew's Church for the Farm Garden. The cleanup is next Saturday morning, and so if you would love to be outside uh, in beautiful weather doing some, uh, some work in the fields, uh, that is your chance next Saturday morning. So be in touch with uh, St. Andrew's Parish, and, uh, and, uh, and or I think even just show up. Uh, the details are in the leaflet. So as we begin today, we are hearing our opening sentence from Scripture, the word of the Lord abides forever. That word is the good news which was preached to you. I invite you to stand. Our opening hymn is from Common Praise, number 319. Come, let us join our cheerful songs.
The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. We pray this day from page 185 in the Book of Alternative Services, the Green Book. We pray together the Collect for Purity. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open. All desires to know, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse and all desires our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may be perfectly like you, and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have built your church on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone. Join us together in unity of spirit by their teaching, that we may become a holy temple acceptable to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. I invite you to be seated now as we hear today's scripture readings. A reading from the book of Job. There was once a man in the land of Uz whose name was Job. That man was blameless and upright, one who feared God and turned away from evil. One day the heavenly beings came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan also came among them to present himself before the Lord. The Lord said to Satan, where have you come from? Satan answered the Lord, from going to and fro on the earth and from walking up and down on it. The Lord said to Satan, have you considered my servant Job? There was no one like him on the earth, a blameless and upright man who fears God and turns away from evil. He still persists in his integrity, although you incited me against him to destroy him for no reason. Then Satan answered the Lord, skin for skin, all that people have they will give to save their lives. But stretch out your hand now and touch his bone and his flesh, and he will curse you to your face. The Lord said to Satan, very well, he is in your power, only spare his life. 
So Satan went out from the presence of the Lord and inflicted loathsome sores on Job from the sole of his foot to the crown of his head. Job took a pot shard from which to scrape himself and sat among the ashes. Then his wife said to him, Do you still persist in your integrity? Curse God and die. But he said to her, You speak as any foolish woman would speak. Shall we receive the good at the hand of God and not receive the bad? In all this, Job did not sin with his lips. Hear what the Spirit is saying. The psalm is Psalm 26, page 734, and we'll read it by the half verse. <clears throat> Give judgment for me, O Lord, for I have lived with integrity. I have trusted the Lord and have not altered. Test me, O Lord, and try me. For your love is before my eyes. I have walked faithfully with you. I have not sat with the worthless. Nor have I consorted with the sinful. I have hated the company of evildoers. I will not sit down with the I will wash my hands in innocence, O Lord. Singing aloud a song of thanksgiving. Lord, I love the place in which you dwell. Do not sweep me away with sinners. My hands are full of evil plots. My foot stands on evil ground. And together, God of love and mercy, give us clean hands and pure hearts, that we may walk in innocence and come to your eternal dwelling, to praise you in the company of your saints forever. morning. Second reading today is a reading from the letter to the Hebrews. Long ago God spoke to our ancestors in many and various ways by the prophets. But in these last days he has spoken to us by a son, whom he appointed heir of all things through whom he also created the worlds. He is the reflection of God's glory and the exact imprint of God's very being and he sustains all things by his powerful word. When he made purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. Now God did not subject the coming world about what we, what we are speaking to angels, but someone has testified somewhere what are human beings that you are mindful of them, or mortals that you care for them? You have made them for a little while lower than the angels, and you have crowned them with glory and honor, subjecting all things under their feet. Now, in subjecting all things to them, God left them nothing outside their control. As it is, we do not yet see everything in subjection to them, but we do see Jesus and for a little while was made lower than the angels, now crowned with glory and honor because of the suffering of death, 
so that by the grace of God he might taste death for everyone. It was fitting that God, for whom and through whom all things exist, in bringing many children to glory, should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through sufferings. For the one who sanctifies and those who are sanctified all have one Father. For this reason, Jesus is not ashamed to call them brothers and sisters, saying, I will proclaim your name to my brothers and sisters. In the midst of the congregation, I will praise you. Hear what the Spirit is saying. I invite you to stand as we prepare to greet the gospel. Our gradual hymn is Come My Way, My Truth, My Life, Common Praise 569. The Lord be with you. The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Some Pharisees came, and to test him, they asked, Is it lawful for a man to divorce his wife? He answered them, What did Moses command you? They said, Moses allowed a man to write a certificate of dismissal and to divorce her. But Jesus said to them, Because of your hardness of heart, he wrote this commandment for you. But from the beginning of creation, God made them male and female. For this reason, the man shall leave his father and mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. So they are no longer two, but one flesh. Therefore, what God has joined together, let no one separate. Then in the house, the disciples asked him again about this matter. He said to them, whoever divorces his wife and marries another commits adultery against her. And if she divorces her husband and marries another, she commits adultery. People were bringing little children to him in order that he might touch them, and the, dis the disciples spoke sternly to them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, Let the little children come to me. Do not stop them, for it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly, I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And he took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. 
the Gospel of Christ. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Now may the words of my lips, the meditations of all our hearts, be guided by your holy word and your holy wisdom. Amen. Amen. Let the little children come to me. Do not stop them, for it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Words that ring out and remind us and strike us, particularly in the wake of Orange Shirt Day that we marked particularly last Thursday and the Sunday before, the National Day for Truth and Reconciliation. Striking words also after the disciples themselves have spoken sternly, we read, to those bringing the children to Jesus for a blessing. And Jesus is indignant with them for getting in the way. It's important as we hear these readings that we not leave off hearing both the indignant Jesus in this text as well as the gentle Jesus. These are striking words in that wider context as we hear questions around marriage and divorce, questions of practice that are brought to Jesus by the Pharisees who are interested, as the Gospel of Mark puts it, in testing Jesus on whether he really reads the law or not, questions of interpretation, how to live in light of this. The Pharisees seem to want to go back to Deuteronomy 24 to preserve the male right to write a certificate of divorce for seemingly no particular reason. Jesus turns the question toward the intention behind it rather than mere legalities. Jesus says to them, because of your hardness of heart, Moses wrote this commandment for you. He seems to be pushing back against self-interest in the marriage relationship, a self-interest that manifests itself in tearing the relationship of failing to treat marriage, one's partner, with sufficient seriousness as reflective of the faithfulness and fidelity of the creator of all things. And so here the theology of marriage takes its cue from the faithfulness of God as undivided unity. But it will be important to note that this conversation about marriage and divorce is taken up and modified in new directions subsequently, with different emphases arising even in the biblical writings themselves, first in the Gospel of Matthew, which is written later than Mark, and then later in the emerging early church by the Apostle Paul, who introduces new exceptions and nuances in the first letter to the Corinthians in light of the realities faced by that community. And with a particular concern in view, Paul writes, God has called us to peace. And so when it comes to how to read biblical literature well, these are important moves. For a principle such as God has called us to peace points us, the church, away from a fundamentalism about the text itself and toward a theological seriousness and flexibility. The kind of engaging theological work that in Anglican term, terms we have often uh, called the three-legged stool of scripture, tradition, and reason all at work in our reflections and in our mode of understanding and then of practice, in finding our way faithfully and carefully in different times and places, but always circling around the center, the God who draws all things toward a unity, a unity that is marked by self-giving love. And so in today's collect, as we began this morning, we prayed, join us together in unity of spirit by the teaching of the apostles and prophets, that we may become a holy temple acceptable to you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. And that seems to be especially poignant in this time of continued reflection and of reorientation toward new relationships as colonial, colonialism fades. 
in a litany and reflection that some of you may have seen and tuned into on Orange Shirt Day by Indigenous Anglican elders, Bishop Sidney Black of the Siksika Nation reminded us that many of the children buried in unmarked graves were baptized into Christ. And so they are our sisters and brothers in Christ. That seems to me to be cause for deep and troubling reflection because we know that in many ways that was a baptism imposed rather than sought. So how is this to be understood? How can that be detangled from the assumptions of a controlling empire? I don't think it can be done easily. And yet Bishop Black spoke clearly that these lost sisters and brothers belong to both Christ and Creator, and that they are indeed martyrs in the faith that we hold. So as he spoke those words, I thought perhaps that offers a way forward, for a martyr is a witness, and witnesses are pointers in both life and in death to something, something that is deeper, that is higher, that is broader. Martyrs are witnesses that both critique what exists and has been, and also point to something other. Christ, the one who is indignant with hardness of heart, and who despite the protest of his own disciples, counteracts that by inviting the children to draw near. Christ tells us that the way we receive the kingdom of God is as a little child, this is not about naivety. It is rather about the awareness that the kingdom of God is to be welcomed without concern for our own position in it, without controlling who gets to be part of it. And so we read, he took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. Jesus speaks blessing to these little ones, and Jesus does so as an everlasting sign of what the church is to be. The church is called here to offer a new kind of family, a place of belonging, of care and support, of unity of purpose, in keeping with the Christ who brings the kingdom of God with him and among us in this life. In the letter to the Hebrews, we read of human beings having been given control in this world. That seems to me to be a significant note, because what we do really matters. And where is God in the midst of all the hardness of heart we encounter, both in ourselves and in our societies, and also, yes, in the church itself? There's a sense here that God hands over to us the responsibility to manage what has been given by the Creator who created the worlds and has also spoken to us by a Son. But that's also the key, the center, around which we must constantly circle. Because into that responsibility that is given to us, the Word is spoken. And so in Hebrews we read, again, it was fitting that God, for whom and through whom all things exist, in bringing many children to glory, should make the pioneer of their salvation perfect through sufferings. Into the midst of suffering, Christ has gone before us. In Christ, the divine joins with a suffering humanity. And so that word spoken to us includes even the tearing asunder through suffering and death of what we are wont to tear of the damage that we do. So that we hear from the figure of Job today, in our first reading, is entirely appropriate. Job is a poetic figure of human suffering writ large. Through this figure, we are asked, what will we do with our faith, with our trust in God, even in the midst of suffering? Will we carry on with integrity before God and others. Bishop Black offers words of wisdom toward that very integrity from a place of pain. He says, life always has those unexpected moments of grace that touch you with love, joy, and hope in the form of family, friends, 
and the church lifting you up in prayer. Faith is how we stand up to those things that threaten us, he says, and how we manage our fears makes a big difference. And so here to us, the call to faith is also a call to strength, a strength rooted in the work of God to soften our hearts. And so again, as we hear these words and this word, as we hear Jesus' gentle word as well as Jesus' indignant word to us, may we keep on praying, join us together in unity of spirit, that we may indeed become a holy temple acceptable to you through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. I invite you to stand as we confess our faith together, the faith of our baptism in the words of the Apostles' Creed. Let us confess the faith of our baptism as we say, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, We bring our prayers before God this morning. Jennifer comes to lead us in prayer. Please join me in prayer in a position most comfortable for you. In response to the bidding, let us pray to the Lord. Please respond, Lord, hear our prayer. God of mercy and healing, you who hear the cries of those in need, receive these peti petitions of your people that all who are troubled may know peace comfort, and courage. For peace from on high and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the peace of the whole world, remembering this week the struggles in Afghanistan and the continued turmoil in the Middle East, for the welfare of the Holy Church of God, and for the unity of all, especially St. James Cathedral, Peace River, Alberta, and the Cathedral of St. Paul, Detroit, Michigan, and the Church in Wales. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our bishops and for all the clergy and people, especially Lynn McNaughton, our Archbishop, the locally trained Priests Commission, the Reverend Jeff Donnelly, Chair, the Right Reverend Anna Greenwood Lee, Bishop, and the clergy and people of the Diocese, the Diocese of British Columbia, as well the Dean, Council, and Congregations of the Lower Mainland Region of the British Columbia Synod of the Evangelical Lutheran Church in Canada. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For Elizabeth, our Queen, for the leaders of the nations and for all in authority, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer.
hear our prayer. For our city of Kelowna and for every city and community and for those who live in them in faith, remembering this week Alcoholics Anonymous, Belgo Elementary School, and Mission Creek Landing Extended Care Facility. And in our church family, Anthony and Tannis Reed, Christopher, Catherine, and Jennifer, Iona and Donald Rietzma, and Stuart Richardson. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For good weather and for abundant harvests for all to share, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who travel by land, water, or air, <clears throat> for the sick and the suffering, <clears throat> especially Robin and Linda, Valerie, Shelley Lynn, June Sturrock Rudrum, Connie, Heather, Deb, Renee, John, Jill, Chandar, Brian, Carol and David, Marv, Evelyn, Laura, Danica, Ruth and Colleen, and Rowan. For prisoners and captives and for their safety, health, and salvation, with special prayers for the many refugees being turned away at the U.S. border. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, Lord hear our prayer. As we commemorate this first National Day of Truth and Re Reconciliation, let us pray for all former students of residential schools and their families as they seek healing, hope, and recovery from abuse. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Gracious God, your word spoken through our prophets lives and walks among us, proclaiming your justice and healing. Through Jesus, you invite all creation into your reconciling love. As you freed his followers from their fear of the risks of discipleship, so draw us forward with strength, compassion, and courage to give of ourselves in the ministry of reconciliation entrusted to us. Through Jesus Christ, your Son. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, let us remember that God is steadfast in love, infinite in mercy, that we are welcomed, even as sinners, to this holy table and let us confess our sins, being confident in God's forgiveness. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. And now, Almighty God, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Though we cannot shake hands or embrace, I invite you to turn to one another and acknowledge uh, the peace of the Lord amongst us.
As the table is prepared for communion this day, we will sing our offertory anthem. The bread and wine will be set, and if you have a gift or offering, uh, you will find that at the back of the church. Our offertory anthem is for the beauty of the earth. of truth, receive all we offer you this day. Make us worthy servants, strong to follow in the pattern of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Blessed are you, gracious God, creator of heaven and earth. You are the source of light and life for all your creation. You made us in your own image and call us to new life in Jesus Christ, our Savior. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices to proclaim the glory of your name.
We give thanks to you, Lord, our God, for the goodness and love you have made known to us in creation, in calling Israel to be your people, in your word spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, a death he freely accepted, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, loving God, according to his command, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we, made acceptable in him, may be sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, reconcile all things in Christ and make them new. Bring us to that city of light where you dwell with all your sons and daughters, through Jesus Christ our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory are yours, almighty God, now and forever. Amen. Now from page 211, we continue as we pray as our Savior Christ has taught us, being bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. We, being many, are one body, for we all share in the one bread. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. The body of Christ.
I invite you to stand. Let us pray. Almighty God, may we who have been strengthened by this Eucharist remain in your steadfast love and show in our lives the saving mystery that we celebrate. This we ask in the name of Jesus Christ the Lord. Amen. And we say together, glory to God, whose power... go forth in the name of Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen. You will find refreshments outside. <laughs>